having this conversation, the Harare conversation that um, we have as we wrap um, International uh, Women's Day commemorations that was celebrated on the 8th of March. And we now have come to the end of the month. Yes, we have now come to the end of month of March, where internationally we do um, celebrate women's achievements. Um, and like I said, I'm really uh, grateful to be on this platform, to be um, moderating today's conversation, the Harare conversation, where Shingai Mazima is with us. Um, and I'm sure a colleague could be also on board soon to take us through um, as women, is the month to uh, celebrate um, achievements that we have made against the uh, team for this year uh, that was running and still running up to end to maybe end of day to day, or we will continue even after the month of March. Uh, gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow, and here we. My apologies on the um, like it looks I had been cut off there. But like I say, without wasting much of the time, may I accord this time to Shingai Mazima? I get, I guess you get me uh, clear, loud and clear, Shingai, to introduce yourself, um, give us your profile what you are doing and how, what you understand um, by this year's theme, gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow. And we are focusing on breaking the bias. Over to you, um, Shingai. All right, um, thank you very much for that. So, um, Afternoon, everyone. My name is Shinga, Shinga Matima. I am a second year mining engineering student at the University of Zimbabwe. Um, however, I also work as a creative in Harare. So um, I initially started off in the fashion space and have just been slowly moving around, learning about different disciplines, um, the different disciplines in the creative spaces around Harare. Uh, the topic of the day, gender equality and breaking the bias. Um, I think for me specifically, that would be relevant with regards to um, the course that I am studying at school. And so just um, having more women being a lot more representation in predominantly male uh, communities and male industries and breaking the bias, you know, I. I've come across and like I've met a lot of people who feel as though engineering is a particularly male dominated industry. I've come across quite a lot of creatives who feel as though certain disciplines are specifically for men. And so just breaking the bias and um, allowing more women into those spaces and sort of giving women and females opportunities to explore those spaces and exploring the different contributions that women are able to then make. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, thank you so much for that insight, Shingai. 
and um, may I find out you are into you are the creative director for Rojinji Consultants, and um, as well you are saying you are studying uh, mining engineering, and I see this as um, uh, should I say to extremists where people believe if you are, are into arts, you leave the sciences for the scientists. Um, tell me, how do you, how, how do you manage the two, Shingai? Uh, where, where... Um, so for me on my... Um, afternoon, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, you, you can go ahead, Shingai. You are audible now. All right. Um, so just to answer the previous question that Ms. Musha had asked, uh, for me, on my end, I'm very grateful and I'm very blessed and I thank God every day uh, to be in environments that are really supportive of my dreams and just to be surrounded by people who are really supportive of me as a person and just accomplishing goals and goal oriented very just like a very supportive environment where you know you can do anything i think those are that that's the kind of environment i come from so you can do anything you want to do this you work hard and you pursue that thing and it's yours. Those are the kind of environments and the kind of people that I have been blessed to be surrounded by. And so it's something that I'm, I know like at every point in time, it's always very like, I also do have my own moments of self-doubt, but just being in these spaces with different people and I'm just so blessed and I'm so grateful because I do not know what I would do without my support system. So that's, yeah. Um, okay, Shingi, I'm so sorry. Um, forgive me on this side. My network connectivity is not very well. It's actually I'm on off. Um, and I, I did miss part of your uh, explanation there where I had posed the question to say, how do you juggle between the arts and, and the scientists? Um, looking at it that you are into mining engineering and as well the um, director um, creative regime consultants and uh, that's more with our space so yes um, thank you for that bit I want to believe people on board did uh, hear you uh, try explain yourself there. Connectivity, honestly, this side is, is not good enough for me. But um, yes, what do you think, Ching? What do you think in terms of um, uh, breaking the bias uh, in a bigger picture as a country? You are still very young. I, I see you uh, in your 20s, early 20s there. And uh, what is your comment um, in gender equality issues as women looking at the bigger picture as a country? Um, the bigger picture in what context? In the context. And as a country in what context as well? Um, I, I, I thought uh, maybe you have a comment as um, uh, looking at your side as young as you are pushing, and like you said, uh, you are into uh, mining engineering. Um, 
do you think Zimbabwe, we have done enough in terms of um, uh, breaking this bias, uh, trying to uh, have gender equality as, 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 as a country, as a nation? Do you have any comment there? All right. Um, so I recently did a bit of research on, just to add on the research that I already had on the Education 5.0 and the heritage philosophy. And this was something that is being that that has been implemented by the government recently with high and tertiary educational institutions. And that sort of looks at, um, I think it's like innovation, there's five different aspects of how uh, the education system is going about tackling issues of education for students and making efforts to meet their needs. And so with the sort of information and the research that I did on that, I do, there is a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of breaking the bias, but I do definitely feel like there is hope for us as a country. And it is very encouraging to be part of the system. And I'm looking forward to where we are going as a country with regards to all of these changes. And I'm sure like there's also a, a bunch of other different policies that the government is putting into place that would be beneficial to um, moving forward and breaking the bias in regards to all of that. But yeah, definitely, I do feel as though we are making headway. There is quite a bit of way to go, but we are definitely making headway. Oh, yes, thank you uh, for that response. Um, if I get you right, you are saying as a country we have at least started because we have 5.0 um, heritage um, uh, platform where we as a country we are encouraging to look at issues from that perspective of um, um, as Zimbabweans finding solutions to uh, our own uh, issues um, using also resources that are available. And yes, we yes. still have a long way. Yes, we have a long way to go. Uh, but the fact that we have started and um, we, that at least that shows we will get somewhere. Uh, thank you. And uh, do we have, Sharon is not yet on board, I, I believe. Sharon? Yes, I am on board now. Oh, wonderful. Good to hear from you, Sharon. And um, I've been chatting with um, Shingai Mazima. This is now Sharon Senior. Sharon, can you please give us a brief background about yourself and tell us about um, breaking the bias that we as women are celebrating uh, with regards gender equality issues um yes this is your time sharon to speak to us all okay all right i'll just go right ahead and introduce myself as already stated my name is sharon Signoro, and i am a lawyer i obtained my llbs at university of zimbabwe i graduated in 2018 I went on to acquire my master's in international intellectual property law at Brunel University, London. I have an interest in human rights, intellectual property law, commercial law, and I'm also a founder of the Intellectual Property Print, which is a blog which seeks to bring awareness to various national and international intellectual property law issues. I've also obtained various certificates from the World Intellectual Property Organizations. And I've also been based, I've also represented human, a lot of human rights activists and I have a keen interest in human rights as well. In terms of uh, breaking the bias, which is the theme for this year, I think it's just, it's a way of ensuring that uh, everyone is taught about both conscious and unconscious bias in terms of how 
women are expected to have their goals, their expectations, and their ambitions. Therefore, it's just ensuring that that is completely broken and there are no negative assumptions that are put across on women or negative expectations on women. So that, to me, that is breaking the bias. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sharon, uh, for that uh, background you gave us. Um, and yes, uh, breaking the bias is the theme that we are looking at in this year, which I want to believe is going to be going even beyond the month of March. Um, like you have given us to say, Sharon, that um, we is that conscious and unconscious activities uh, uh, that do happen and um, to women and maybe society. Um, would you then say, do you have any comment uh, as we look at the, the, the the gender equality as a country, looking at it from the legal uh, background to tell us from your organization that you are working with, would you say we are somewhere as a country or do you think we have, um, do you have any comments that you'd want to make to women in general? or uh, decision makers to help us push for gender equality, uh, looking at, at, at the theme, breaking the bias. Okay, thank you. I believe that the potential of women has become limitless in Zimbabwe. I think the foundation, if I should say from a legal point of view, has been laid. If we were to look at, this is not something new, but this is just something that women should be aware of in the community as well, when they are treating women, that the constitution has already laid out that they should be genders. I think it recognizes the equality of all explicitly outlaw discrimination on the grounds of sex and gender. And secondly, if you look at the Labor Act as well, it has recognized women in terms of maternity leave, which is something that women were struggling with before. So that is something that has been laid out so that there can be equality between male and female workers as well. So I think that there is, there has been some progress in terms of the law, in terms of the legal side. However, if we were to look at it from a practical point of view, what we would then ask is, has this been implemented? And are people really looking at the law and implementing it every single day as they live? I think that's another question that we have to ask ourselves whether the law has been regarded in terms of how people make their policy, how they make their laws, or to dodge such laws, or do some progress. However, they, I feel that they still need to work out how exactly this can be put across from a practical point of view. Okay, Sharon, uh, thank you. Yes, you are raising there to say uh, policy. We have uh, a lot that has been done in terms of, um, um, aware, uh, sorry, uh, even in labor where women have been granted um, um, maternity uh, leave. Uh, also potential is there with women but probably is the practical uh, part that we would want to uh, review to say how best can we implement the laws that are there in place. And I get interest when you mention um, 
the, that awareness is also key to uh, achieving um, gender equality, where I am probably uh, going to say uh, how much awareness, because yes, I believe through social media uh, platforms, various social media platforms, we have seen quite a lot happening from different spaces. But um, looking at Zimbabwe and uh, talking of connectivity, which I just was giving apologies, uh, because even as you were presenting, Sharon, I could hear uh, jacks and breaks of your voice because my connectivity is not that uh, is not the best of all and i'm looking beyond even institutions and people like yourself uh, shingai mazima and um, myself to say the people beyond in the rural places how best do we have any programs from uh, your side shingai do we have programs uh, Sharon, that also touch best with women that are not reachable through um, internet, which is what is uh, trending today to say, looking at COVID-19 pan pandemic that we, we are living with. Uh, to reach out, you have to be connected. And how much and what have we done so far in terms of reaching out to the women right on the on the ground say who are in the rural places i'll account this space to shingai and then come back to you sharon shingai Hello? Oh, Sharon, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you. I may have lost uh, Shingai there. Would, would you want to come in and then I will accord this time to Shingi? Sure, that's fine. That's okay. I can go ahead. So from what you have stated, I think that is a very valid point to ask ourselves whether it's the majority of the women that are involved and whether they are aware. I think in Zimbabwe, the population of women is probably 52% constitutes women. And it's sad to see that they still lag behind across key sectors in the country, like you are saying. So from that 52%, it's quite important to notice that most women are situated in the rural areas and only a small fraction are connected and are, have the privilege to be on such platforms to speak and to learn about how exactly they can improve themselves and know their rights as women as well, because not everyone is privileged to know all these things that are happening in the legal sector. So I think there are organizations that have gone about beyond to make sure that women are aware of their rights. If I can make reference to UN Women, there is a branch in Zimbabwe which has made such strides to make sure that children as young as 15 are aware of their rights. And they've made it sure, they've made sure that they are aware, which is still quite high in Zimbabwe, and also child marriages, and they are aware as well of just general is still quite high among maybe uh, dying during child labor. I think last year we had a very famous case of during childbirth. And these are children that do not know their rights and do not know that just like men, they have the right to education, to go to school, to just interact with other boys as well at school. And they've been subject to just domestic chores at home. So I think UN Women has done quite a number of things to ensure that this declines 
by a certain percentage. And I think bringing the theme into perspective this year, which is to break the bias, it's constantly something that is being communicated, not only on people to people that are on these platforms, but to people that do not have internet access as well and are not privy to social media and the daily news as well. And all have done a lot. They have educated women in rural areas before, and they have also made sure that they are aware of their rights and they can make use of their rights as well. And I think what is also key, not only to people that are not on these platforms to know, but it's also to just educate, not just the women, but the men as well. So that when it comes to implementing the laws, it becomes easier because if both women and men know the law, it's easier to implement in workplaces. It's easier to implement even in communities and in homes. So that is something that we believe that breaking the bias includes. It includes not only the women, but the men as well, so that they can accept that there are certain laws that can help women and they are aware as well. So awareness definitely is key, like you stated. I think that is all for now. Okay, thank you, Sharon. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's quite a mouthful. And um, uh, I'm sure it's kind of multi-sectoral approach where you are acknowledging that we have different organizations out there to also assist in giving awareness to women and other um, underprivileged maybe people, uh, inclusive the children uh, that you mentioned to say they may, you find sometimes some are involved in child labor uh, ages of 15 or so. And I was going to comment to say on that point, maybe it, it can even go beyond um, awareness where you may find uh, as a country, we children may be in a dilemma much as they are aware that they are not supposed to be working, but the situations may force them to be out there working because um, they are in a state that uh, cause them more to be working than to, uh, to, 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 to claim their rights as children um, where they, they are not supposed to be working because they are uh, underage. Um, uh, but because of the situations, like I say, they may be forced to be uh, involved in, um, in in the child labor. Um, Shingai. Do we have Shingai on board? Or yes, I am. Oh, thank you, Shingai. Yes, um, yeah. Yes, did you uh, get uh, my comment, my question to say as an organization, as um, uh, the director of Shinji Consultants, uh, do you have a comment or would you want to share with us uh, something relating to uh, going beyond um, to reach out to the to touch best with those people who are not privileged to be um, uh, internet connectivity? but they are out there in the rural uh, places. And like Sharon said, 52 maybe percent of a population um, constitute women. And that's quite, quite uh, a, a big percentage. And with women, more of the women in the rural areas. Do you have any comment, Shingai, that you want to make to us as we look at breaking the bias as our theme for this year? Um, so for me, on my end, one of the end goals for Rujinti is to develop an alternative arts education initiative for children from low income households. And so thank you for bringing that up as well. Um, I think with regards to connectivity and improving communication, um, 
I feel as though more information or I don't, I feel as though the media and the available media outlets do not emphasize um, the importance and the significance of digitalization, specifically in this age, in this particular time and generation that we are living in, this specific decade. Um, we look at Mark Zuckerberg, we look at Elon Musk, people are making developments. We actually even look at our own government. People are making developments and moving towards um, space exploration, the metaverse, um, all of these new digitalized, not new, but like digitalization is something that we all need to um, realize is a real possibility for us as a human race and as a population. And so with regards to communication and connectivity, I would encourage uh, members of rural communities to look into community, um, community, like looking into tapping into community and, you know, growth points, having raising funds, you know, raising funds to make sure we at least funny on Musha and they like computer or something of that sort. And just like making efforts to 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 I know like funding and like funds might not be available for everyone, but just like having to be able to being able to realize that this is something that we are actually moving into as a population and actively making steps or taking steps to move towards that, which then just looks like putting together money, buying a an eight gigabyte bundle um, from Econet and that being something that the whole community shares. I would definitely move towards that if that is, um, if connectivity and communication are things that are not available to members from rural communities. Oh, thank you, Shingi. Yes, I hear you that um, if I get you right, you are suggesting if uh, rural people out there, should they come together probably yes. to not to be left behind, but probably put the little resources that could be available. And um, that actually reminds me of uh, when the television uh, started, you know, mm. uh, coming in of the television, those who had televisions then, you would find in the society, in the community, you will all would go there and uh, sit to watch uh, the, you know, the television and so excited mm. to understand uh, what is happening. Um, so yes, you are saying there, if possible, people could should at least start uh, as, yes. as a community and feel that they need to understand what is uh, going on around them. And probably yes. if we are to get people to assist, uh, like the, um, the network, uh, service providers, Econet, uh, Tel One, uh, and so forth, then they can be on board, but it all should start with us as a people uh, to yes. also want to be on board. Thank you so much. I, I do appreciate that point. Um, but let me also now say, uh, what if uh, we say as a country, would it be, uh, don't we have as a country some funding that can be taxed or is being taxed towards uh, uh, people to assist people in terms of uh, reaching or maybe setting up uh, connectivity with the rural people out there. How, what, how do you feel if we are to say, let's have people to be taxed to extend our connectivity, probably to boost that which is available and reach out so that we don't leave others behind and just us having those who are capable of, of, of the accessing this internet. Um, on board. What is your feeling? Sharon? 
Yes. I think it would be a very good initiative to do that, though I think already people are not really forthcoming when it comes to paying a lot of tax because it's something that's already frowned upon. People do not want to pay tax and people will, I think from a legal point of view, people will do whatever it takes to just avoid paying tax. But I do agree that it is a good initiative. And like you said, ensuring that no one is left behind in terms of these issues and these discussions is quite a key thing to do and having to provide internet and access to the people that cannot afford it is a starting point and it is a, a foundation that can definitely ensure that people are educated because once you educate and people network and they discuss these issues definitely the bias will be broken in this in this in this way and the ground can definitely be leveled using that initiative. But maybe if we can start with what we have before even printing, before even taxing the general public, we could even start by just a, an NGO would definitely be something that we could start with. And then we can move to educating people through internet and providing access for them and also just general printing maybe if we were to say in a in a newspaper we are to just put a small issue maybe just a small page or a small space to just educate people because a newspaper is something that everyone has access to so just print and just printing something can definitely make awareness spread awareness to the people that do not have access to internet and if it can actually be added to a curriculum, maybe in schools, and even to start as, as young as preschool to ensure that children are aware of their rights as, as young as they're able to understand certain concepts and certain principles, I think that would definitely be key to ensuring that by the time they blossom into full women, they will understand these concepts. And it's not something that we will be trying to do at a later stage, in other terms, trying to close the stables door when the horse is already bolted. Like we said that there is a high mortality rate. So by the time they get to 15, it's something that they are fully aware of, if that makes sense. Yes, I think it does make a lot of sense. Uh, Sharon, uh, you actually um, uh, take me to make a comment uh, about uh, child rights, where we, if anything, we would want children also to be part and parcel of all these initiatives and not to uh, wait for them up until they 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 are in an age that we think probably 15 or so that's when we should uh, engage them because i believe child rights are human rights and that means um children uh, have the same or they should uh, enjoy uh, human rights they should enjoy child rights equally as adults and yes, these programs, these, um, the gender inequality that you are talking about, issues that has to do with um, gender inequality do apply to children as well. Uh, allow me at this point to say, um, uh, I thank you ladies uh, for uh, being on board. And I would want to open this space to even uh, those, uh, the audience uh, with us today, do we have comments? Do we have questions that could be um, uh, forwarded to the two ladies uh, who have volunteered, who have accepted to be with us as we wrap this month of March, uh, uh, speaking to International Women's Day um as we celebrate achievements 
as we celebrate initiatives that women have done, um, specifically uh, looking at Zimbabwe. And these two young ladies, I understand they have been sharing with us quite a lot. Uh, do we have any questions, comments that we would want to make as we still have the uh, two ladies, Sharon Signoro and uh, Shingai Mazima on board to maybe respond or anything that we would want to comment with regards to um, this topic um, on gender, breaking the bias, the gender equality issues. Silence means content. Um, Sharon and um, Sharon and and uh, Shingai, you both start your names. They do start with S, two S's. Uh, thank you so much, ladies, for being with us. Do you think you would want to? Oh, yes, I see a hand from Lynn Berry there. Uh, I'll accord you time to share with us if it is a comment or question. Lynn, can you go ahead? Yes, thank you, Liz. Um, can you hear me? Loud and clear, I can hear you. Wonderful. I'm just wanting to contribute to say thank you so much for a really interesting discussion. And I just feel like the arts have got such a huge role to play. Obviously, institutions like Village UNU, the First Floor Gallery, Gallery Delta, the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, which is uh, Harari, Matari and Bulawayo. I think that women in the arts are finding more and more of a voice for themselves. And I'm seeing it so much more clearly, perhaps even because of the pandemic we've just been through, that women have been perhaps more empowered to join exhibitions and to make comments about their art and their cultures. Um, the Ministry of Sports, Youth and Culture and the National Arts Council are all quite supportive. And I think Zimbabwe's got a really very powerful voice with women in the art to carry forward. Um, our TV stations and our radio stations seem to be making huge progress in terms of there's often programs on drugs, cultural, cultural issues, storytelling. And I just think art in general, such as writing, storytelling, poetry, um, the visual arts, music, all of those things which used to be quite well embraced with um, initiatives such as Haifa, are all really, really interesting spaces for women and in fact, transgender to find their voices. So it, it, as you said before, it supersedes gender. It's actually men and women, it supersedes culture. It actually creates an equal platform for everybody to be um, available to make their case or be heard on if you embrace the arts and at a school level as well. So that was what was interesting to me. I think Shingai Maziwa mentioned an art initiative at school level for um, you know, underprivileged children or children who weren't empowered to have easy access to art programs. So yeah, I'm just coming in from the point of view, I think that art in all its forms is a really strong media for the expression of women, but not just women, women and men breaking the bias literally. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lynn Perry. Yes, I know you are an artist and um, that's why you're really uh, contributing, uh, you know, uh, speaking about the arts. And that's very true. You actually remind me, the painting behind me, if you look at me, that painting behind me, um, that's a lady, a Bronwyn Evans, I'm sure you know her, Lynn Berry. And she has been part of the exhibition that we just opened last Friday, the 25th of March, under the theme Beyond Restrictions. And Beyond Restrictions is speaking to um, the hardships that COVID-19 as a pandemic brought to us as 
humanity, but there are people who found opportunities, people who managed to, much as it was so hard, they were so able to, uh, to make uh, creations, they were able to do paintings, they were able to do uh, uh, sculpting, because this is a trio uh, exhibition where we have uh, two men, two gentlemen and one lady. And uh, which is what you are talking about, breaking the bias, um, accommodating each other in these spaces to be able to showcase and, and live um, harmoniously as, as a society. And yes, talk of Bronwyn Evans, she is the lady who did initiate this exhibition. And I'm so glad to say we see women making decisions, taking lead also when you talk of the arts and even talk of visiting galleries. Ongoing, very powerful exhibitions. And as men in the street, these are all accessible places for people to visit and to just get a feeling of, of what people, what are. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Do we have any other uh, um, comments? Do we have questions from people who are on yeah, listening? Yes, Chief Chasu, can you please go uh, ahead so with the comment? Oh, thank you, ma'am Lizzie. Uh, I think just as a comment to the uh, two wonderful presenters there, uh, Shingai and Sharon, that was, that was really powerful. Mm -hmm. I also think part of the trick to, in terms of influencing others is, is, is their ability to, 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 to like water a bit down. You see people like, Sharon, they are like, you know, legal minded pe people and Shinga is a scientist, but their ability to come down and come up with programs and projects and things that can speak to someone who is not even, you know, uh, that extremely, you know, side of that extreme side of, of, of a profession. I think that's the skill because it, it may not really make wonders if we, we, we might break the bias, but and it then doesn't, you know, uh, get the appreciation that it should to the ordinary villager down there, to that young girl there in Mutoko, mm. to go go there in, in, in some part of Murewa, and, and you know, mm. those people, because these are the people that we are talking about, mm. the people that we should be having in mind in terms of whatever we are saying is, is, is breaking the bias. So I, I, I saw someone on Twitter saying, the, the 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 theme could be really something like you know having a bias now towards action uh, not just you don't just break the bias and leave it there you break the bias and you have a bias towards action so that's my only comment thank you oh thank you so much uh livingstone yes um that's that's also very powerful to talk of the two presenters um presentation that they managed to de-roll, I would say, being able to make that impact even to the lowest level of, 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 of people to understand them much as their professions are, are quite high profile uh, professions, uh, the legal uh, aspect and the scientist uh, side one would think there's quite a lot of jargon that I cannot understand, but yes, I say uh, that's the, the essence, that's the idea to be able to reach out, to be able to, to, to break uh, that boundary and make impact to the majority in order to, to progress together. Thank you. Do we have any any other comments, any questions uh, with regards to this uh, platform? Shingai and Sharon, you're also still free to maybe as we get to the end of the program, give us maybe a word that you would want to send out to those who are listening. Do you have anything to say in short, Shingai? 
and, and Sharon after Shingai, do you have anything that you'd want to say with regards your 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 sector of um, uh, that you're coming from um, with regards breaking the bias, gender equality? What would you want the audience to remember you with before you leave? Over to you, um, So from my end, I'd just like to say thank you very much for the invitation. It is such an honor to be able to sit down with all of you this afternoon and have this discussion. This is such an important discussion and a very necessary discussion that needs to be had. And I'm so happy and so grateful to be able to have had this discussion with all of you, the listeners, and specifically with Sharon and Miss Musha. Sharon, it's been such an honor to be able to participate in this discussion with you. And same to you, Miss Musha. Um, you know, you, you did say I was young. <laughs> so I'll just take that opportunity. And I would encourage everyone to push me. So like the young people these days, <laughs> have this thing called pushing P and it's basically the idea of pushing positivity. And I think it's related to um, something that one of the earlier speakers said about um, bias towards action. And so definitely I just encourage everyone to push positivity and to continue moving forward and moving on. Yeah. Yes, most welcome, Shingai, and thank you. We actually would want to thank you for accepting our invitation, being one of the speakers on this conversation, Harare Conversations. And um, yes, then I will accord this time to Sharon to give us your, your closing kind of remarks. Okay, thank you, Shingai. It was an honor to be on this platform. Thank you for inviting me to speak as well. Thank you, Liz, for coordinating this. It was quite, it was quite enlightening, if I should say. I am truly honored to be a participant in this. I believe that it's something that's very necessary. And I would just la lastly like to comment on what Chief Chasu said. I think it was quite it was quite enlightening as well and i noticed that like you said that what we need to do is now to push actions because when this theme came on board i remember so many people if i should say so many of my male colleagues and male counterparts were actually saying that but there's no bias people are now equal the foundation has already been laid the playing ground has been leveled if I should say, but I don't think that's the issue. And to all those that believe that the level ground has been leveled, I do not think that's completely true. They need to ask themselves certain things. And I just want to leave a few questions to people that there are some things that they should consider if they think that the bias has been broken. These are in terms of maybe gender pay gap, the safety environments at work, the disadvantages that women are facing in the workforce and the balance of genders generally in the working environment and in communities. And lastly, I would just want to say, us as women, let's continue to just be bold, to, let's be boldly ourselves and let's speak loudly so that people can hear us. And let's also push action because that is what's lacking. Let's be practical about these things and let's do the little that we can in each and every environment that we are in, maybe in our workplaces, in our communities, and also at home. Let's just continue to push action. The little that we do will amount to something great one day. Thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. Actually, the two of you, Shingai and Sharon, I really want to to give a big pump pump for your presentations, for accepting to be on the Harari Conversation platform, where, like I said in the beginning, we are speaking about um, breaking the bias, as we also feel and think from our different angles where we are coming from, 
if we put the little energy, the little efforts that we have put that together, if I'm to take your words, Sharon, uh, put that together, we can come to, um, to some differences and a difference that can uh, maybe one day speak of equality um, if ever we will realize equality and um, yeah equality amongst the uh, different uh, sectors as women as um, different ages uh, different um, backgrounds and i want to say i i thought i heard you speak of equity that we are from different backgrounds and we are not the ground is not level so if we can also take into cognizance such as well to um to keep actioning we need to keep actioning and may i before i call this off uh thank you even the audience out there chief just Lindberry, i see you say thank you elizabeth for all for a thought provoking and positive discussion actually i want to thank my head office I want to thank Livingstone as well, my executive director, Mr. Rafael Chikukwa, for this opportunity uh, to give us as women. She, uh, I'm sure he said women for women. Um, yes, we are talking of breaking the bias, not just being gender, looking at women and men, but it goes beyond that. But we found it fit for um me to step in for the organization to um be driving this uh, conversation as we engaged as women so thank you so much um everyone and please enjoy the rest of your thursday afternoon as we go to our different spaces uh the end of march does not mean end of uh gender equality issues let's keep uh singing the hymns let's keep engaging and let's talk about these uh, issues even beyond in different platforms and i'm sure uh conversations like this and other spaces will make a difference thank you